We have seen the specs of the upcoming PS5 and there is some speculation going around that it will outperform most PCs. But is this really true? Hey guys, I am Alkai Maximus and let's take a look to see if the PS5 will end PC gaming. First and foremost, we should take a look to the past. In 1995, we got the PS1 worldwide. The PS1 was a fifth generation console made by Sony. It sported a measly 33.86 MHz 32-bit processor with 3 MB of RAM, with 1 MB dedicated for video. It didn't come with any storage, so you had to buy 1 MB memory cards to be able to store your game saved data. Remember playing the game and leaving your PS1 turned on because you didn't have a memory card? Fun times. On the PC side of things, Intel had released their 120 to 200 MHz versions of their Pentium processors. ATI had their Rage 2 GPU, which had 2 MB of memory, and Nvidia released their first desktop GPU, the NV1, which had 2 to 4 MB of RAM. Most PC gamers were enjoying games like Doom, Wake, and Command and Conqueror, which were games that even the PS1 could run. The average PC gamer had around 8 megabytes of RAM and between 400 megabytes to 1 gigabyte of hard drive storage space, which is a clear advantage over the PS1. Gaming performance were pretty much identical. Fast forward to the year 2000, we had the PlayStation 2. This legend of a console had 294 megahertz processor, which actually went up to 299 megahertz in latest models such as the Slim. It had 32 megabytes of base RAM and 4 megabytes of video RAM, but to be fair, this was a big leap from the PS1. We still had to use memory cards, however, we got 8 megabytes instead of 1. The year 2000 was also an exciting year for PC gamers as AMD and Intel reached their 1 gigahertz barrier for their Athlon and Pentium 3 CPUs. Nvidia and AMD released their GeForce 2 and Radeon 7000 series cards, which had about 32 to 64 megabytes of RAM. Most games that PC gamers played were Diablo 2, The Sims, Deus Ex and Counter Strike. So any difference in graphics performance there? Not really. But we had 40 to 80 gigabytes of storage space and an average of 256 megabytes of RAM. So clearly a huge advantage still. In 2006 we had the PS3 and while it didn't do well in sales, it was actually the most powerful console of its time. The PS3 came with a whopping 3.2 GHz processor with 256 MB of RAM and a 500 MHz 400 g flops GPU sporting 256 MB of VRAM. However, this time you had hard drive options from 20 GB to 500 GB. You could install a bigger hard drive if you wished, adding more to the limited upgradability. The only advantage the PS3 had over any console or device was the Blu-ray player. At its time, it was the cheapest Blu-ray player on the market. That's if you cared about Blu-ray movies. I didn't. On the PC side of things, we had the average PC gamer at dual-core CPUs such as the AMD Athlon 64X2 or the newly released Intel Core 2 Duo, with around 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM and 250 to 320 gigabytes of storage space. Nvidia also had released their GT 7000 series cards and AMD with their Radeon X1000 series. Over to 2013 where we had the PS4. This packed an 8 core AMD CPU with 1GB of DDR3 RAM and 8GB of GDDR5 GPU memory. This guy was a beast compared to my little i3 PC with 4GB of RAM and a GPU which I don't even remember the name of. The PS4 also had 500GB of storage space which was expandable. I put a 2TB SSD in my Pro model, just saying. Now over to the PS5. The PS5 has an AMD Zen 2 based CPU with 8 cores at 3.5 GHz. A 10.28 TFLOPS GPU with 16GB of GDR6 memory. A 825GB custom SSD, nice, with a 4K Blu-ray player and backwards compatibility. As of now, my PC has an i9-9900KF processor. 32GB of DDR4 RAM, an RTX 2080 Ti and a total of 9TB of storage with 1TB NVMe and 2x4TB hard drives. My PC just about beats the PS5 in performance but for mid tier users, well they have their work cut out for them. So what is my verdict? I say not really. As you can see, every launch date the PlayStation is on par with a high end PC of its year. 
However, PCs are upgradable, allowing you to swap out your CPU and GPU whenever you feel like you're lagging behind. More and powerful PC components are manufactured every year, which eventually gives the PC a higher ground. Unless Sony make the PS5 upgradable and release custom parts every year, the PC will just keep on outperforming it.